TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Jerusalem and Washington are negotiating the scope and targets that will be struck in Iran over the Islamic Republic's blatant attack against Israel. Israeli Defense Ministry of Ghana stresses that Israel has more surprises in the barrel in the war versus Iran and its proxies. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei praises Hamas for the atrocities it committed on October 7th of last year. Israel faces Iran's regional terror proxies while its defense establishment is preparing to mount a direct retaliatory strike against the Islamic Republic in the next several days. On the Gaza front, the IDF made some significant progress in deepening its operational successes, destroying countless subterranean installations and eliminating dozens of Hamas terror operatives in the southern and central Gaza Strip. Moreover, the IDF announced that in a complex operation coordinated between Israel, the United States and other international actors, a 21-year Meanwhile, it has been cleared for publication that in a targeted elimination as part of the IDF's operational activities to degrade Hamas's governing hold over the Gaza Strip, Rahi Mushtaha, head of Hamas's government in the Gaza Strip and a right-hand man of Yahya Sinwal was killed. Mushtaha, who was regarded as one of the most influential Hamas figures in Gaza, was evidently kept secret for a couple of weeks by the terror group for fear that it would further erode Hamas's ability to convince the population throughout the enclave that it maintains control. Meanwhile, in the northwestern Samaria district of the so-called West Bank, the IDF, in close cooperation with the ISA, or Shin Bet, conducted a rare aerial strike of a structure in the city of Tulkarem where leaders of a number of terror groups congregated. According to an IDF statement, the strike eliminated Yahya Yasser Abed al Razek Aufi, the head of the Hamas terrorist network in Tulkarem, alongside multiple other significant terrorists, including of Hamas as well as Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who were part of the terror network in Tulkarem, were eliminated. This strike joins a number of significant counterterrorism activities that the IDF and ISA have conducted in northern Judea and Samaria since the start of the war. Turning to Israel's northern front, where Israeli Defense Minister Yav Galan spoke to field commanders of the IDF's 36th Division, during the course of which he highlighted that in addition to the elimination of Hassan Nasrallah, Israel has more surprises in the barrel for the heavily battered Iranian proxy Hezbollah. Hezbollah absorbs very severe blows, one after the other. We eliminated Nasrallah, and we have more surprises in the barrel, some of which have already been carried out and some of which will still be carried out. Hezbollah's missile and rocket array has suffered a very severe blow, a significant part, I would say most of it, has been destroyed as a result of a very high quality and precise operation, control headquarters, contact formations, all Radwin's top commanders, and in fact, the entire second and third echelons below Nasrallah are eliminated. This is a very significant thing, established on accurate intelligence and struck where it was deemed necessary. In parallel to these operations, we are carrying out an operation in several villages today, and this process will continue wherever necessary, in order to destroy all the infrastructure from which Hezbollah planned to carry out attacks. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to praise the operating troops, who continue to make significant gains, highlighting the fact that the IDF troops are fighting while the communities of northern Israel are visible behind them, granting them overwhelming strength against the enemy. 
I see the operation of the forces. I met the fighters, I met the commanders, I am talking to you as a force that is in the depth of things, and the business is very clear, there are hundreds of terrorists who have been eliminated. There are many underground and surface sites with munitions warehouses, with shooting equipment, with rockets, with anti-tank missiles, and with arrays designed to harm our citizens, we are going to clean all of this up. Anyone who fights in the field sees Israel's communities and is back and fully understands why our northern communities need to be protected and why this is important. And this is true for the entire length of the sector from the Rosh Hanikra to Mechelot anywhere and everywhere. Therefore, we will remove this threat and we will enable the return of our citizens back to their homes. The visit by Minister Gallant earlier today came nearly several hours after RDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Helzia Levy visited the Northern Front as well, during the course of which he told field commanders of both the 98th and 36th Divisions that the RDF will not allow Hezbollah to ever entrench along Israel's Northern Front in the future. Throughout the holiday, the IDF continues to fight vigorously in Lebanon and in other combat sectors. Today, I met the commanders and troops of Division 98 and Division 36, who are fighting in Lebanon for a very important purpose, to reassert security in the north and returning the residents to their homes after more than a year of being displaced. The return of the residents requires us to destroy the terrorist infrastructure that Hezbollah built near the border so that it could raid our communities once an order is given to kill Israeli civilians. We are very determined to destroy these infrastructures and eliminate whoever is there. We will not allow Hezbollah to entrench in these places in the future. General Halevi further stressed that the RDF has the upper hand in every encounter in which it faces Hezbollah terrorists. Meanwhile in Iran, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei in a rare Friday ceremony proclaimed that Hezbollah has an Islamic obligation to support the atrocities which Hamas inflicted upon Israel. <laughs> Nobody based on any international laws has the right to object to the nation of Lebanon. Lebanon says Bullah that why have you are supporting Gaza and the uprising of Palestinian people? It's their duty. They had to do it. It is an Islamic ruling and a logical law and also an international and global logic. Palestinians are defending their land. Their defense is legitimate and helping them is also legitimate. Khamenei went on to proclaim his support for Hamas's onslaught of October 7th of last year, in which they brutally massacred some 1,200 mostly civilians, wounded over 4,800 others to include brutal rape and other atrocities, and kidnapped some 250 individuals, including women, elderly, children and infants, 101 of them remain in Hamas captivity to date. The Al-Aqsa storm operation that took place last year around the same days as now was an international right, logical, legal and move and Palestinians had the right. In addition to praising the heinous crimes committed against Israelis alongside dozens of foreign nationals, Khamenei also proclaimed that his country's belligerent strike of over 180 ballistic missiles against Israel was both brilliant and justified. The brilliant action of our armed forces in the attack on Israel two or three nights ago was a completely legal and legitimate operation. Death to Israel. Death to America. Death to England. Meanwhile, after President Joe Biden's voiced objection to an Israeli strike on Iran's nuclear program drew scathing rebuke, the American leader has stopped short from expanding on his objections publicly as of late, stressing that he does not intend to negotiate the scope and detail of Israel's anticipated retaliation in public. Sir. Yeah.
we're discussing that. I think I think that would be a little anyway. Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary Sabrina Singh subsequently expanded on the matter, yet stopped George from alluding to Washington's position. Um, we're not looking for a wider regional conflict. We're not seeking war with any um, group or organization or country in the region. Um, you know, we continue to engage the Israelis, you know, very frequently. Uh, we are certainly talking to them about their response, but what their response might be, I'm just not going to speculate further on. But we do continue to engage with them. Um, and I'll just have to leave it at that. Meanwhile, President Biden stressed to reporters that while he does not know whether Israel's retaliatory strike would ultimately lead to an all-out regional war, he does believe one can be avoided. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Separately, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider.